This is an artificially aware original production. Have you ever found yourself scrolling through your feed, minding your own business, when suddenly a post, a headline, or an image stops you dead in your tracks? Your heart races, your breath quickens, and before you know it, you're consumed by a firestorm of emotion, rage, fear, disgust, sometimes even hatred. That post wasn't just a piece of information. It was a trigger carefully crafted to bypass your ability to think clearly. It wasn't a coincidence, and it certainly wasn't accidental. But here's the kicker. It's not just that they want your attention. They want to manipulate your brain's deepest survival instincts. I stumbled upon this idea thanks to a comment from Iwaz12, who mentioned how disinformation could hijack the prefrontal cortex by flooding it with emotional content. That comment sparked something in me. I started wondering how many times have we fallen victim to this invisible enemy, our own brain, tricked into reacting without thinking. What if all this outrage, all this division, is someone's deliberate plan to keep us from thinking rationally? Today we're diving into the science of how your brain gets hijacked, how it happens without you even realizing it, and more importantly, how you can stop it. Buckle up because this one's gonna hit hard. You ever notice how certain headlines seem crafted to make your blood boil? It's not a glitch in the system, it's the system itself. Emotional content is the brain's kryptonite. Let me break it down. Your brain has a gatekeeper, the prefrontal cortex. This is the part that governs logic, decision-making, and self-control. It's the reason you don't yell at your boss after a bad day or punch someone who cuts you off in traffic. The prefrontal cortex is your brain's filter, deciding what's worth reacting to and what's not. But here's the catch. When someone, say a social media post or a news outlet, floods your brain with strong emotions, fear, anger, hate, your gatekeeper gets overwhelmed. It's like a dam breaking under the weight of too much water. Suddenly, the prefrontal cortex is sidelined, and who takes over? The hypothalamus and amygdala, your primal brain structures. These parts of the brain aren't concerned with logic or long-term consequences. They're wired for survival, and when they kick in, your reactions are fast, instinctual, and emotional. Think about it. Why else do clickbait headlines work so well? It's not because they're informative, it's because they're triggering your emotional brain to take over. From there, it's a straight line to manipulation. Now, let's dig into how this hijacking really works. The prefrontal cortex is the brain's CEO, it's responsible for weighing options, making logical decisions, and considering long-term consequences. When you're calm and rational, the prefrontal cortex runs the show, and you make thoughtful choices. But the second emotional content floods your system. It's as if your brain's CEO gets shoved aside, and your primal brain steps in. This primal brain, the hypothalamus and amygdala, exists to protect you from immediate threats which means its focus is on survival, not nuance. In ancient times, this was great. If a lion appeared in front of you, there wasn't time to sit and think, hmm, what's the best way to escape this situation? No, your hypothalamus kicked in, pumped adrenaline through your system, and you bolted. The problem is, today's threats aren't lions. They're tweets, headlines, and emotionally manipulative content designed to make you react, not think. When this happens, you're not asking, is this true, or does this even make sense? You're reacting. Your brain is hardwired for survival, 
and this makes you vulnerable to emotional manipulation. And the manipulators, they know this. Think about the last time you reacted emotionally to something on the news or social media. Maybe it was a video that made you angry or a headline that filled you with fear. That wasn't just an emotional response, it was a biological one. When your emotional brain is triggered, your body floods with stress hormones like cortisol. Your heart rate spikes, your muscles tense, and your brain goes into fight or flight mode. This is your limbic system, your primal brain, taking control. What's worse is that in these moments, your ability to reason shuts down. Studies show that when people are emotionally aroused, their brain's logic center, the prefrontal cortex, literally becomes less active. This is why emotional manipulation works so well in politics, advertising, and even media. By keeping your brain in a constant state of fear or anger, they keep you reacting rather than thinking. Robert Sapolsky, a renowned neuroscientist, describes this as the flip from rational to primal brain function. Once that flip happens, you're no longer processing information logically. You're in survival mode, and that's where the real danger lies. We're living in a world where information is more accessible than ever before, yet manipulation is at an all-time high. Why? Because media, politics, and advertising have figured out the key to controlling the masses, keep them emotionally engaged. Every headline, every breaking news banner, every viral post is designed to trigger an emotional response. Fear and anger are the most potent because they trigger the brain's most powerful reactions. Fear tells you to run, while anger tells you to fight. And both make you forget one critical thing, to think. When you're in this emotional state, you're not fact-checking. You're not weighing options. You're not considering alternative viewpoints. You're just reacting. And that's exactly what they want. Whether it's a politician using fear to gain votes, a news outlet trying to get more views, or a social media post designed to go viral, the formula is the same. Make you feel, then make you react. The truth? It becomes secondary, if not irrelevant. As long as they have your attention, they've already won. This brings us to the most potent weapons in the manipulator's toolkit, fear and anger. These emotions aren't just strong, they're primal. When you're afraid, your brain goes into survival mode. Your body prepares to flee or fight, and your ability to think critically is drowned out by instinct. Fear-based manipulation is everywhere, from political campaigns that portray the opposition as a threat to your way of life to advertisements that suggest you'll be in danger if you don't buy their product. Fear is the ultimate motivator. But then there's anger, which is just as powerful. When you're angry, your body floods with adrenaline and you become laser focused on whatever triggered that anger. Politicians, media outlets, and even social media influencers know that anger gets engagement. Think about the most shared content online it's rarely positive or balanced. It's usually divisive, designed to provoke outrage. And here's the kicker. When you're in this emotional state, you're not stopping to think, is this even true? You're too busy reacting. That's exactly what they're counting on. It's time to talk about cognitive bias, the brain's secret saboteur. Our brains are wired to seek out information that confirms what we already believe. This is called confirmation bias, and it's a crucial part of how emotional manipulation works. When your emotions are triggered, especially fear or anger, your brain searches for information that aligns with those feelings. 
You're not looking for objective facts, you're looking for validation. If you're angry at a political party, your brain will latch onto any piece of news that confirms that anger, even if it's false. If you're afraid of a certain group of people, your brain will amplify stories that reinforce that fear, regardless of whether they're true. And this isn't just about your conscious mind, this is happening on a subconscious level. Once your emotions are triggered, you're stuck in an echo chamber of your own making. And guess what? The algorithms behind your favorite social media platforms know this. They feed you content that matches your biases because they know it keeps you engaged. It's not about truth, it's about keeping you hooked. Social media isn't just a tool for connection, it's a tool for manipulation. These platforms are designed to keep you engaged, and they've learned that emotionally charged content is the best way to do that. The more outraged, fearful, or angry you are, the more likely you are to engage, whether that's liking, sharing, or commenting. And the algorithms? They notice. They see what you interact with and feed you more of it. It's a feedback loop designed to keep your brain in a constant state of emotional arousal. The more you engage, the more the algorithm pushes similar content your way. Over time, this creates an echo chamber where all you see is content that reinforces your emotions, whether it's fear, anger, or even hatred. The result? A divided, polarized society where everyone is reacting, but no one is thinking. And in this state, manipulation becomes easy. Social media is no longer just a platform for sharing ideas. It's a battleground for your mind and the algorithm is the puppet master pulling the strings. Here's where at EI Waz 12 nailed it. When someone tells you to hate, they are not your ally, they are your enemy. It doesn't matter if it's a politician, a news anchor, or someone on social media. The second they provoke hate, they are manipulating you. Why? Because hate is a tool. It bypasses your ability to think critically and engages your primal brain. When someone tells you to hate a person, a group, or an idea, they're not giving you information. They're giving you emotion. And that emotion is meant to cloud your judgment. Think about the last time you were told to hate someone. Did you stop to question it? Or did you react? That's what they're counting on. The moment you stop questioning and start reacting is the moment they have control over you. And the worst part, you won't even realize it's happening until it's too late. So how do you fight back against this manipulation? The first step is simple, recognize it. When you feel your emotions spike, whether it's fear, anger, or even excitement, pause. Take a breath. This is called emotional regulation, and it's your brain's best defense against manipulation. By calming your emotional state, you allow your prefrontal cortex to come back online. You can't make rational decisions when your emotions are running wild, so the first step to regaining control is calming your mind. Techniques like deep breathing, mindfulness, or even just stepping away from the screen for a few minutes can make a world of difference. Once you've calmed down, you'll be able to think more clearly, and that's when you can make decisions based on logic, not emotion. The next step, think before you click. Before you share, comment, or react to a piece of content, ask yourself, what is this post trying to make me feel? If it's trying to provoke a strong emotional reaction, be skeptical. Disinformation thrives on speed. Manipulators want you to react quickly without thinking. By taking a moment to pause, reflect, and fact check, 
you can break the cycle of manipulation. Ask yourself, is this true? Does this make sense? Is there another side to this story? These simple questions can save you from falling into the trap of emotional manipulation. And remember, just because something feels true doesn't mean it is. Emotion is not evidence and reaction is not reason. Reclaiming control over your brain starts with awareness. The prefrontal cortex, the logical, rational part of your brain, is your greatest defense against emotional manipulation. But it can only work if you're in control of your emotions. By staying calm, mindful, and thoughtful, you can ensure that your decisions are based on logic, not reaction. It's about reclaiming your power as a thinker, not just a reactor. Don't let emotional manipulators pull your strings. You have the power to stop, think, and choose for yourself. We've come full circle, and if there's one takeaway from this, it's this. Emotional manipulation is the enemy of critical thinking. The next time you're online, watching the news, or even in a conversation, ask yourself, who benefits from my reaction? Who wins if I hate, fear, or lash out? Once you start questioning, you're already ahead of the game. Huge thanks to IWAS12 for sparking this conversation. It's comments like these that keep us thinking, and that's exactly what we need more of in this world. If this resonated with you, if it opened your eyes even a little, don't forget to like, share, and comment below. Let's keep this conversation going because a thinking mind is a powerful mind. Subscribe for more deep dives like this one. And as always, stay sharp, stay critical, and never stop questioning.